Who have been some of the biggest influences on your career, Chris, whether it be family members, friends, teammates? Uh, who are those that you attribute a lot of your success to? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I can uh, I start with my dad. That's an easy one. You know, just kind of my core values. I think a lot of those came from him with, you know, I like to think my work ethic and humility. Uh, he taught me that at a young age. And, um, you know, I can talk about Bill Conroy, Cox, Cox, my high school baseball coach. You know, he was uh, huge for me. Um, then going to UVA, um, Kevin McMullen, Brian O'Connor, those guys helped me a ton. And um, then all the way through pro ball, it's, it's, it's hard to name any of my teammates because there's so many. You know, you, uh, I, I think I learn more from my teammates than I do from my coaches, to be honest. Just, yeah, just talking to those guys, picking their brain. Um, you know, Justin Turner's one guy that's really helped me a lot. Um, you know, he, he had a similar career path as me um, coming up with the New York Mets and not really being able to establish himself there. Eventually he gets, or he's on the Los Angeles Dodgers and that's kind of where he established himself pretty late in his career. And he made a big swing change and kind of completely changed his career path. So, um, you know, it, he's somebody I really like to talk the game with a lot and uh, he's helped me a lot. You've had some really indelible moments as a member of the Dodgers and helping them win a championship and get to multiple World Series games. I mean, they could, they all stick out, I'm sure, but which one gets brought up the most? Is it now this three-homer game and an elimination game against the Braves? Is it the walk-off against St. Louis? Is it the throw-out at the plate against the Brewers? I mean, what gets brought up the most to you, be it for the common fan, the person in L.A., uh, your teammates or peers in sport? I, I don't know. I, I mean – before this year, it was probably the catch in Milwaukee or the the first pitch homer against the Astros. But for me personally, I think the walk off home run this year against the Cardinals that was um, probably my biggest moment. I think just because it was a a one game elimination, um, I didn't even start the game. I was coming off the bench. I had a, a two really tough months like probably the toughest stretch of my career and I didn't feel good at all my swing was not in a good place and I came in I was just like gonna try to grind it out and do whatever I could to help us and you know by some miracle I was able to hit a, a walk-off home run and uh yeah that felt really good just kind of took a big a monkey off my back and uh you know obviously got us to the next round against the Giants What's when you're running the bases after that moment, what's that like as, as a pro and on the biggest stages? I mean, outside of being in the World Series type right there, but to send your team on to the next round, what's that like? Yeah, it's just pure adrenaline rush for me. I, I don't even remember it. I, it's just it happens really fast. The blur, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've always been envious of the guys that can look like really cool when they do stuff like that and like pimp it and walk to first and trot slowly around the bases and I'm sprinting full speed all the way around. I don't know why I do that, but I, I'm sprinting all the way around. Like, uh, I don't know what comes over me, but uh, yeah, it's just a pure adrenaline rush. A few more minutes with Chris Taylor. He's a product of the University of Virginia and Frank W. Cox High School in Virginia Beach. Our guest here on ESPN Radio 94.1. It's the 757 at 6. You hear 757 Saturday Sports Talk as well. And you also get the chance to watch this on virginiapreps.com and our YouTube channel. Uh, Chris, before we get to rapid fire and let you run, and we'll also give you a chance to uh, give some more pub to your event coming up here on January the 16th at Top Golf. Join Chris and his drive for hope, raising funds for the fight against pediatric cancer. It's a great cause. You want to go out there for some fun, some food some uh, auction giveaways, all kinds of neat things Chris and his crew will be doing up at Top Golf later this month. But um, there's, there's kids that want to be the next Chris Taylor. You mentioned about, you know, the Michael Kadires, the David Wrights, the Uptons, the Zimmermans, all these different guys. And I brought this up to David Wright, I think a year or two ago at Harbor Park when he was back home. What do you tell a high school kid who's a really good baseball player? He thinks he can one day be in the majors. What advice would you give them, be it within the craft and outside of the sport? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I, I usually tell them just take it one step at a time, you know, be present where you are. Um, that's how I always approached it. Um, 
you know, if you're in high school, focus on playing well in high school. And like, if your goal is to be a division one baseball player, then do whatever you can to get there. And um, you, you can't look too far forward and you can't think about playing in the major leagues when you're in high school or college, you know, you have to um, be present in the moment and uh, you know, work to get to that next step. And then once you get to that next level, work to get to the level after that. And um, I think that's the easiest way to go about it. It's very easy to get caught up in wishing you were somewhere else. And uh, that's, uh, that's something I saw a lot of in the minor leagues guys looking forward and thinking they should be in triple a when they're in double a or be in the big leagues when they're in triple a. And um, it's, it's hard to, uh, to play like that. Biggest thing, probably just what blocking out the noise and distractions, because it seems like they're growing even more from when you began in high school to now with social media, with name, image, and likeness, all these different things and things that can be distractions for athletes coming up that it's just, you have to stay at that, that old cliche of what one day at a time, because if you look past that day, that's when you start to go sideways. Exactly right. Um, it is very cliche, but that's the truth. Um, you got to take it uh, one day at a time and just uh, constantly, no matter where you are, you're just constantly working to improve as a baseball player or whatever you aspire to be. Good deal. Now, uh, usually this time of year, we're saying, all right, getting ready for spring training pitchers and catchers. But right now we know there's a little bit of a stalemate, if you will. I mean, people are going to say, Hey, how's it looking for the Dodgers right now? Is it just a matter of you as a player saying, man, I just hope we get this all settled. We can get on the field come April or whenever that time is. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of input in that. So I'm not putting much of my focus on it. You know, I hope it all works out and we're able to, to work something out before the, deadline and we can start spring training on time um you know right now i'm preparing like that's going to be the case so yes that's a quick follow-up that before we get to the uh last thing with the event and then do rapid fire with you we mentioned it with high school kids and people that want to be the next big so how do you as a pro now handle that and ignore all that different noise and stay kind of focused and driven on that task knowing that people are going to constantly badger you with this and what do you think and kind of solicit your thoughts and opinion on it yeah i mean it it's not very difficult for me. You know, like I said, I, uh, I just focus on what I can control and, you know, I've never really bothered to put much attention to things that I have no say in. Um, you know, obviously I hope we can work it out and we, we play and, uh, we start on time, but, uh, I, th there's nothing I can really do about it. So. Sure. Now, um, certainly they can come out to this event, ct3foundation.org. But if someone out there is listening and wants to get involved with your, your fight for this, how can they do so? Give the, the, the listeners, the audience out there, ways that they can help contribute for what you're doing from a charitable standpoint. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you go on the website, there's um, a donate now button or just, you know, get a ticket or buy a bay for the, the Top Golf event. I think it's going to be a, a really good time. We have a couple live performances from uh, a local band, Kendall Street Company, and then also David Vincent Williams, who uh, he wrote a lot of songs for Rascal Flats, and um, he's pretty he's pretty big time. So uh, it, it should be should be fun. Um, going to play some golf. There's going to be good food, entertainment. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. 12 noon to 4 p.m. Eastern coming up on Sunday, January 16th at Top Golf. You can be there with Chris Taylor and his crew. It's going to have a uh, golf, food, drinks, entertainment, celebrity auction, all those things. It's going to benefit the Children's Hospital, the King's Daughters, and Rock Solid, uh, Rock Solid Foundation in support of the fight against pediatric cancer. So great to see Chris and everybody getting involved for this. Well, before we let you run, and we appreciate this so much, Chris, you ready to play some rapid fire with us? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go with Chris Tiller of the Los Angeles Dodgers, an all-star world champ out of UVA and Cox High in Virginia Beach. All right, what's your favorite TV show? Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, you're a Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm guy. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, everybody's got a baseball movie. What's Chris Tiller's favorite baseball movie? Bull Durham. You're a Bull Durham. Okay. Yeah, big Kevin Costner fan. He's done a lot of good movies, certainly. You think of Bull Durham, you think of Field Dreams. Hole-in-one on the golf course? or walk off Homer. 
I gotta go walk off Homer. <laughs> but you've done that though, right? Have you done a hole in one? Yeah, but hole in one. I mean, hole in one would be awesome. Don't get me wrong, but. I mean, I play baseball for a living, so I'm going to take the baseball. I understand. I, I'm not going to blame you for that. If we could say if it was holding one like in an event, tournament event, compared to like a spring training, you might then go holding one. But if it's a real game, you got to go baseball, right? Yeah. Toughest pitcher you've ever faced? This one's tough for me. Everyone asks me this, and there's so many guys. Um, Max Scherzer. First guy that comes in my head, but that, that question's interchangeable. Sure. Depends what, what day, what time of the year, right? Yeah. Best ballpark to hit in is? Coors Field. Why Colorado. Is that? <laughs> yeah. The fellow 757 Pro, this can be any sport, fellow 757 Pro you stay in touch with the most is? Oh, um. I don't know. I mean, I David Wright lives close by. I've been in touch with him recently. I'm trying to think if there's anyone in other sports. Because Cox High has sent some pros beyond just uh, – certainly it's a school known for baseball, field hockey, football, different sports that they win championships in, wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. David Wright's the most recent one I was in contact with. I'll say that. Okay, that's fair. Uh, coolest person in or out of sports – that you've met since becoming a pro? Hmm. I met Jason Bateman. Was, okay. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, he's exactly how he is in person as he, as he is on screen, which was kind of interesting. All right. Now, the person you've not met in or out of sports that you would most like to meet? Um, Cross off your bucket list. Yeah. I need more time for these questions. Uh, I'll, I'll go Eric Church. Eric Church? All-time okay, yeah. favorite country singer, yeah. All right. If Chris Taylor was not playing pro baseball, his occupation would be what? Firefighter. Okay. Hardest subject in school for you was? History. All right. This is where it becomes a rapid fire part. And the late yeah. night snack you can't do without? Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> All right. Those are never a bad thing. I enjoy those myself. Chris Taylor, thank you so much. Los Angeles Dodgers All-Star World Champ. He helped them capture their first crown since 1988. And he's out of the 757 Cox High School in Virginia Beach and the University of Virginia. Again, go help Chris. Driving for Hope, raising funds for the fight against pediatric cancer. January 16th, coming up at Top Golf in Virginia Beach. Go visit the ct3foundation.org website for much, much more. Get your tickets today. Thanks so much, Chris, uh, best wishes to you with the event and uh, the season, and we'll definitely stay in touch. All right. Thank you.